Hi everyone, <clears throat> excuse me, happy Wednesday. I hope you're all having a great day so far. I sure am. I got up super early this morning and got my kids off to school a little while ago. Um, did a lot of work preparing for my day. Today is one of those days where I am literally back to back with very narrow windows in between everything. So it was really important that I start the day organized. I packed my bag for various things and I was ready to go early. So, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm super excited to be doing this live. I love all the lives that I do. But this one is, um, this one I'm gonna be talking about the area where I've had to do the most work spiritually. And that is in the way of patience. I wanna to talk to you guys about patience and the difference between that and waiting for something because energetically speaking, they're both very, very different. Let me first put it out there in the spirit of being totally authentic and say that patience is not something that has come naturally to me. I am just not wired to be a patient person. I. Um, you know, I'm just conditioned to be very, you know, type A, high energy. I've always been very, very clear on what I've wanted, no matter what it was, even from a young age. I kind of always had my sights set on something and I knew how to go after it and conquer it or make it mine or achieve it or whatever. But what I've found through various life experiences that, you know, much of what we, um, what we deal with is actually out of our control. And I have had to dig really, really deep and figure out how to have patience because there were times where I was trying to achieve something or waiting for something and the wait was just, it was excruciatingly slow, it was excruciatingly challenging because I just wasn't able to obtain whatever it was that I wanted on my time frame. So I had no choice other than to dig really, really deep and figure out how to manage myself during the wait, during that time period where um, I was trying to achieve something or trying to bring something into my reality. <clears throat> so what I wanna do is start out with just a reminder of the, the way the world works through vibration. As you guys have heard me say a million times, everything is energy. I'm gonna keep driving this point home because it is the foundation of the way our universe works. Whether we understand the mechanics of it or not, I wanna to, want to keep bringing this into your awareness because regardless of whether or not we're aware of it, the universe is always playing the matching game. So the universe is always guided by, or it actually one of the fundamental laws is the law of attraction. So it's always matching up things of like vibration. So I want you guys, I wanted to just put that out there as the backdrop. And what is happening in our physical world is a reflection of what's going on vibrationally. So in order for us to manifest something, in order for us to bring it into our physical reality, it first needs to happen on a vibrational or an energetic level. And if you guys have noticed sometimes, you know, maybe you can think of a situation where a relationship wasn't flowing organically or it just wasn't feeling natural or a friendship wasn't feeling natural. There is a vibrational disparity there. That's that's what's going on behind the scenes. There's the, there are two people, and I'm not saying it with any judgment or ranking anybody or saying anybody's better than, than the other person. It's just that there is a vibrational gap, and that's why there isn't a naturalness or an organic nature to the two coming together. On the contrary, I'm sure you guys have experienced certain things where certain you know where friendships, relationships just flow, right? They just happen organically. It's just almost feeling effortless. Not to say that you don't have to put and invest and put work and effort into relationships and friendships. However, I think you guys have probably experienced two different scenarios and, and where they're happening naturally and organically, that's because they're both on the same vibrational plane. There is a magnetism. There is a natural magnetism that is pulling the two things together. So let's talk about you know, we, there's all, there's, I've been, I know there have been many things in my life where, that I've wanted or I've been waiting for. And if you think about it, just in general, I think I alluded in my last live about, you know, the, when we were talking about emotion, the only reason why we want certain things is because we think we'll feel better when they have them, when we have them. And the key is to really manage your emotions and to figure out how to feel better now, be happy now. And I, I don't like to use the word control. I, try to avoid that at all costs because it just energetically, it <clears throat> excuse me causes resistance, but it's about managing your emotions because remember, we always attract into our reality what we're casting, the vibes we're casting into the universe. So that's why it's so, so, so important. You guys are gonna hear me say this over and over and over <clears throat> to harbor feelings of joy and peace 
and gratitude, those are all, all high vibrational emotions. So that's why moment to moment we need to make conscious decisions about how can I get myself into a higher vibrational place. <clears throat> so the goal then, give it, that being said, that everything is happening on a vibrational level, the goal then is to close the gap vibrationally, to, to narrow that vibrational disparity between where you are and where you want to be. And let's and how do you do that? Let's first talk about how not to do that. There are many, many ways how that that we should not go about doing this. I think it's human nature to if we see something, we want it, we want to chase it. We have an, a tendency to lean in, we have a tendency to go after, a tendency to chase it. But that actually, vibrationally speaking, causes resistance. It actually casts a different vibe into the universe because it's coming from a place of lack. It's coming from a place of needing. It's coming from a place of wanting. And in a case where we want something really, really badly, it actually comes from a place of desperation. And desperation is not the type of energy that is attractive. It's not the type of energy that is going to attract into our existence what we want in a natural and organic way. So um, the way to do it is actually by taking the focus off of the object of attention, you can still put it out there and there's a surrender element to the universe. You can put it out there and let the universe know what you want, but the whole key is to put the attention back on yourself and fill yourself up, self-love. You, you guys have been preaching that from day one and I'm such a firm believer in that. Just work on yourself, work on yourself um, physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, invest in relationships that are important to you, culturally, travel, do things that make you happy, do things that bring you into a higher vibration or you know, higher or higher vibrational place. <clears throat> Oftentimes people ask me, how much time do you think it'll take? How much time, I want this. How much time will it take me to achieve this? And in the spiritual world, we always talk about vibration, not time. So my response is always, the time is dependent on, on it's more dependent on closing that vibrational gap. So it's, it's about closing that gap. It's not necessarily measured in time as we think of it in the physical world. So it's, it's, the time is always dependent on the amount of time that it takes to become a vibrational match for that which you desire. So here's one of the keys to, to, um, that I came up with for shifting from waiting into shifting into patience. And I want you guys to, I'm going to kind of put this out there at the beginning and then we'll recap at the end. But this is what I wrote last night. And I think this is, this is something that I've anchored on. This is something that I've, I've developed during my soul work. And you have to embrace the truth that there is a divinely orchestrated plan. And that may or may not be in harmony with what we choose for ourselves. So that's really the key here is to detach from the outcome. When we're waiting for something, you know, it can be, it can be so challenging because we're so fixated on one particular outcome. But the key really is to understand that the universe has a divine or divinely orchestrated plan that's going on behind the scenes. And say things like, I want that or I want something better. And you have to give the universe creative license to work its magic. That's really the key is the universe is, has an infinite amount of wisdom and knowledge that we simply don't have access to in our 3D realm, in our physical reality. So we have to let the universe do its thing and we let the universe do its thing by, by giving it space, by kind of backing off and focusing on ourselves and focusing on raising our vibration. <clears throat> so just to highlight the difference between waiting and patience, I kind of wanted to give you some of the characteristics or the vibrational uh, realities behind the energy of waiting to give you an idea. And if you guys think about, think about certain circumstances in your life where you've been waiting for something, Think about how you felt. I really like to anchor in all, you know, in every situation on how I feel. How does this make me feel? And you know, waiting for something can be really challenging. The time can go excruciatingly slow. It can be frustrating. Um, and so, just think back to certain things, and um, and we'll kind of recap this at the end. But again, waiting comes from a place of lack, wanting. And you recognizing the absence of it by waiting for something, you're just sitting there and you're you're waiting for it. You're keeping at your object of attention at the forefront of your vision, and that's not where you want your focus to be. You always want your you always want to bring the focus back to yourself. So, um, and that actually energetically that causes resistance when we're 
when we're fixated on something and we're waiting for it. So that actually does work against us. It uh, keeps the focus you know, on the object of attention, not on you. It actually causes us to move into a place of control, which is not where we wanna be. If we really see something that we want and, we want, and, we're, and we're trying to go after it, we're trying to control our environment. We're trying to align the pieces ourselves. And that may be very different than what the universe is trying to do. So we're gonna be experiencing a lot of resistance along the way. It um, promotes kind of the idea of chasing, like I mentioned, um, again, cast the vibe of desperation. And this is really important, actually. When you're waiting for something, when you're chasing, when you're I really, really want that relation. I wanna be in that relationship with that person. I, you know, I, I think I'll feel happier when I'm there. Um, it's because one of the most important things you can do is take the person off the pedestal. Take whatever it is that you are going after off the pedestal and level the playing field. You are as worthy as and as, and as valuable as this other person. Um, that's so, so important. And I think that so many times, you know, when we release it, when we take that person off the pedestal and realize that, you know, you're a 10 in your world, they're a 10 in their world. And this is not about judgment or not about comparison, but that pedestal, putting the person up on that pedestal does kind of work against us because that, it again, it just casts a different vibration. It casts a, you know, oh, you're better than me. And I don't know if I'm not worth, if I'm worthy. And you know, we, we attract what we are. So if, if that's, if those are the beliefs that we're telling ourselves, then that's what we're going to be attracting into our existence and not those things at, at the higher vibrational level. So that's why it's so important to, to harbor vibrational, um, harbor as high a vibrational as possible, as high a vibration as possible. Um, waiting, staying in that space of waiting for something exposes you to lower vibrational energies. So it actually, makes you more inclined to engage in negative self-talk, um, fuels limiting beliefs, self-sabotaging self behaviors. You may engage in certain coping mechanisms that may not be the best for you in the interim. And there are so many, um, so many other ways that you could be filling yourself up spiritually, mentally, physically, and emotionally. <clears throat> so let's talk about patience. Patience is where I like to be. And like I said, this, is, this has come, I've come to this place through years and years of soul work. And this has probably been the biggest challenge for me is have, learning to have patience. But it's also been the biggest game changer because I'm way more chill now about a lot of things than I used to be. I used to be kind of very, you know, controlling and micromanaging and just, I thought I could arrange all the pieces in my world the way that I wanted them to be. And what I've learned is that the only thing I can manage is myself. And once I embodied that truth, my, the way that I navigate my physical reality totally changed. So let's talk about what patience sounds like and feels like. So patience casts the vibe of trust. It casts the vibe of trust in the universe and surrenders. And it says, you know what? I realize that I'm not the one controlling my show. I realize that there is a grander plan at work behind the scenes. And I'm going to trust that you, universe, God, creator, whatever name you want to use, you have more wisdom and knowledge than I do. I have a limited, I have limited visibility as a human. I have limited resources in the physical world. And I am going to trust that you will deliver either what I want or something that is better, something that is in my highest good. And that is just so important is that you always have to keep at the forefront of your mind that the universe has your highest good in mind. So while it may seem like a misstep or a setback or a detour in the present day, that's really a necessary step in the process. You have to just sit back and trust the process and know that the universe has your back. It has your highest good in mind at all times. The vibe of patience is a very confident energy. I mean, it's not that energy of desperation, like I'm waiting for something and I'm not gonna be happy until it comes into my existence. Patience says everything is right with the world at all times. Patience says, Everything is as it should be at every moment in time. And that's a very confident energy, knowing that whatever is going on, whatever is ensuing around you, that that's the way it's supposed to be. So you're confident. You're confident in yourself. You're confident in the moment. You're confident in where you are now, where you're going, because you know the universe has this. And it actually forces you to surrender. It forces you to just surrender and and turn it over. And sometimes we don't get to that place of surrender until we've been really, really challenged with something. And I know I've experienced many times in my life where I've had no choice other than to rely on a higher power. 
it just was something I simply couldn't deal with on my own. So I had to surrender and say, you know what? I know there's a bigger plan for me out there. I am going to turn this over to you, universe, God, creator, and trust that you are going to bring me, you're going to align the pieces in my life that in a, you're going to sequence them in such a way that I will, I will continue along the path of my highest good. Patience um, forces you to detach from the outcome and the time frame. So patience, again, gives the universe creative license to work its magic. We have to give the universe that space. And patience is very, very freeing. Patience really takes the burden off of your shoulders. At least that's the experience I've had. It's a lot of weight. It's energetically very, very weighing to walk around feeling like you need to be the one controlling everything. You need to be the one figuring out how to bring whatever it is that you really, really, really want because you think you'll feel better in the having of it into your existence. And that's really draining. That's really draining to feel like you have to orchestrate things every single moment. So it's really, for me, it's been liberating and freeing to just sit back and become an observer, become a silent observer in my own reality and understand that the universe is the universe has a grander plan. Then you shift into a place of rather than forcing and um, controlling, you move into a place of attracting and allowing. So that's that's the, the space that I now live in. It's I work on myself, I do things that fill me up, I invest in myself, again, physically, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, I keep repeating those because there are so many facets to our well-being. And I just simply allow, I put that receiving energy out there and I simply allow the universe to present to me the experiences and the people that are supposed to be in my path. And it's so much easier to live this way. I mean, I even say, I joke, I said, if I, I wish I could have started living this way when I was, you know, 21, whatever, 15, like my kids, I'm instilling a lot of these behaviors or, or not necessarily behaviors, but just a lot of this belief system and this mindset it for my kids and how amazing it would have been to experience my physical reality knowing what I know now but I am where I am because of my life experiences it's not it I, you know I didn't I didn't wake up with this knowledge I had to dig really really deep during certain experiences to get to where I am so um, but it is just so much easier because really the only thing we can we not control but the only thing um, we can manage is ourself so someone might ask, what do I do in the meantime? It's just so hard to wait for something. What do I do? I'm very, you know, it's, it's anxiety provoking. Um, you know, maybe it's easy to become, again, engage in self-deprecating, you know, talk or behaviors or engage in certain things that necessarily aren't necessarily in your highest good. What do I do in the meantime? I really, really want this. I really want to be in a relationship with this person and it's not happening. You know, what do I do? How do I manage myself in the, in the, in the waiting time or the, this period that I'm trying to achieve whatever it is that I want to? And I would say the best advice I would give in that situation is commit to growth. Do anything that fills you up. Again, it goes back to self-love. Self-love is what closes the gap between where you are and what is in your highest good. So again, not necessarily what you want, that's kind of where we started, but I kind of wanted to give you a, just a visual, um, but close the gap between where you are and what is in your highest good. And the universe will partner in that. That's, that's the good thing is that, you know, that's the, the beauty of, of this whole notion of being something being in your highest good is that the universe is there to help you. The universe is there to partner with you. You're not doing this alone. You're co-creating. It's right there with you. That's very different than closing the gap between where you are and what you want because then your focus is on a specific outcome. And you know what? There are many, many outcomes in, in any number of scenarios, in any facet of your life that will please you and that will make you happy. And that's where you need to, again, let the universe surprise you. The universe is amazing. It's very different when you when you walk out, into the, out in the world with the, with the notion of, you know what, everything is where I'm where I'm supposed to be. Everything is unfolding the way it's supposed to. That's very different than, okay, I step outside and let's say I want that and I'm gonna go chase it. And it's like a butterfly. I always use that butterfly analogy. Right? What happens if you're trying to catch a butterfly in mid-flight? Good luck trying to catch it, right? It's just not going to happen. It keeps keeps avoiding you, keeps eluding you. But what happens when you just sit down in, in the garden? You sit down in the middle of the garden and you're just doing your own thing. You're reading a book or 
you know, you're just sitting there just thinking, meditating, writing, whatever, before you know it, the butterfly comes and lands on you, right? That's because you weren't chasing it. It's that chasing energy that we want to avoid. What else can you do in the meantime? Take your attention off of the subject. Don't obsess about it. So don't necessarily forget about it, but don't let it govern your thoughts. Like if you want to be in a relationship with someone, if you're, you know, or friendship or whatever it is, and I use relationships because that's something we all can relate to. We all, our world is built around human relationships and, you know, take the, take the attention off of it. Don't obsess over it. Don't let that person be, don't make that person the star of your show. You be the star of your show. Let them be the star of their show. And if the universe thinks it's a good idea for you guys to come together, you will. But that's very different than I'm going to figure out how I can force a square peg in a round hole and and you know and go and force this to work and and you know throw down ultimatums or whatever it is. That's all very controlling. So it, the only way that things will last long term that they will sustain, that they will stand the test of time, is if we allow, if we allow the universe um, to work its magic and if we allow things to just happen naturally. Because then it's all happening on a vibrational level. We've, it feels effortless. when it, it feels like you're just flowing. It's just, it's a very different feeling. So be the star of your own show. And again, manage your emotions. I say this all the time. That is such an important concept that again, we attract what we are. So if we're attract, if we're harboring those low vibrational emotions, which are um, produced in a scenario of waiting. Because again, that's, that's, you know, why don't I have that? That I must be doing something wrong. What's wrong with me? Those, you're casting that into the universe. So you're attracting other people and experiences with those same, with that same mindset, with those same thoughts. So you want to, you want to totally, you want to try to get rid of those types of thoughts as much as possible and replace them with I am worthy, I am valuable, I am confident, I know that the universe has my back at all times, I am where I should be. And that's the type of mentality that you want that will shift what you attract into your reality. So just as a recap, just I wrote down a few reminders. Um, embody the belief that the universe always has your highest good at the forefront of your agenda. This is so, so important. Again, it, we will all experience detours, what feel like or what feel like detours or setbacks along the way. They're not really detours or setbacks. Yes, it can be painful, whatever it is, but um, again, the universe has your highest good in mind, and that is an absolutely crucial belief to have. Trust the universe in its wisdom, knowledge, and process, and practice fully surrendering. Again, level the playing field. So take whatever it is that you're wanting off of the pedestal. Again, you are worthy, you are valuable, take it off the pedestal, level the playing field. Just say, you know what? They can be the star of their show. I'm going to be the star of mine. And if the universe feels like it's important that we come together, then it will make it happen. And the good news is that I don't have to figure out how. That is so incredibly freeing, you guys, to not have to orchestrate every single detail, right? To just, I always say, you know, the universe, you know, let the universe figure out the how, right? Let it figure out when, let it figure out how. And that's not something, you know, we need to be concerned about. We feel like we do because, you know, we feel like we can, we have an, it's a natural inclination of the human condition to want to control. But, you know, don't worry about the when or the how. Let the universe figure that out. Again, focus on enriching your life physically, mentally, spiritually, emotionally, relationally, culturally, whatever it is, do something that makes you happy. Do something that fills you up. Self-love, again, one of the most important concepts in the spiritual world because that's how we attract. That's what moves us into a place of attracting and allowing. Um, again, detach from outcomes and time frames. Attaching to outcomes is, is ego-based. And I say that without judgment. A lot of times we hear the word ego and we think, oh, it's, you know, it sounds like a judgmental term or a negative term. It's actually really not. It's just a very different, it's the, the other part of ourselves. We've got the ego and the soul and there's this duality that's sort of working together. And the ego is actually can be very, very instrumental in fueling our soul transformation. And I'm gonna be talking more about that. There's a chapter in my book called The Ego Versus the Soul, or The Ego and the Soul, not versus, it's not a competition. It can actually fuel our growth and transformation. So I talk about how that occurs. And um, a lot of these, you know, attaching to outcomes, that's very fear-based. That's, you know, fear of something. You're in fear of something. When you're attached to an outcome, you're clinging on to it because you're scared of something, right? You're scared of 
you know, you have a fear of loneliness or a fear of abandonment or a fear of rejection, or there's something underlying that. There's an underlying fear and fears are ego-based. So we wanna shift into a place where we come from love and we come from a place of trust in the process. And again, just I just wanted to reiterate, control your emotions. It's just so, so important. Again, in moment to moment, and this is, this is something that, that takes time. I mean, for me, it took years to kind of recondition myself to be able to not allow my external environment to overtake my emotions. And for me, that was, that was huge. I mean, that was another game changer. So I keep stressing that, but it's just so, so important. We are all inundated with external factors, stimuli, certain things, but we have to consciously make the decision to harbor certain emotions. And you know, don't let somebody else pull you into negative energy. Don't let somebody else pull you into drama. Just say, you know what, keep that boundary. Say, you know what, I don't wanna feel like that right now. I'm, I'm in my, on my fly, high flying disc. I'm feeling really good right now. I'm choosing to embody joy. And you don't have to go through the whole you know, thing with them, but just make that decision, have that discussion with yourself, have that dialogue with yourself internally. So I just, there's one more thing that I wanted to reiterate, because I think this is really, really important. And I'm gonna read this again. Embrace the truth that there is a divinely orchestrated plan and that may or may not be in harmony with what we would choose for ourselves. So again, that's so important. For me, that was a game changer. When I wrote this, I thought that really kind of, I anchor on that all the time. That, you know, the universe, we have to give it creative license to work its magic. We have to give it the space. If we try to smother it or force a certain outcome, fit a square peg in a roll, in a round hole, it just doesn't work. So just kind of sit back and relaxing and Relaxing is really the key. That's one thing I've learned too, is that we have to just sit back and just chill. And that was, you know, I'm just, I have to say, this is why this is an area where I've had to do a lot of work is I'm just not wired as, I'm not naturally a super, super chill person, but through my spiritual work, I have gotten to that place where there could be like chaos ensuing around me. And I'm like, this is part of the plan. Everything is as, is as it should be. And it's gotten me through some pretty challenging experiences. So um, I hope this has helped you guys. I know this is an area that, I, like I said, I've done tons of work on this on myself over the last several years. And I've gotten to a place where life is just so incredibly sweet and it's so amazing. And you know, I really have learned how to live in the moment and cherish every moment and trust that regardless of what's going on around me, everything is unfolding the way it should be. So. I hope I've given you guys some tips on how to shift from that space of waiting into patience. It's again about surrendering, trusting the process, trusting the universe, knowing that it always has your highest good in mind. And um, with that, I will leave you guys uh, wishing you joy and peace and love and abundance and everything else amazing that this universe has to offer. And I will be in touch over the next couple days. Hope you guys have a great day. Bye.